Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and today's video I'm going to be sharing with you what I picked up at the thrift store while they were having their sale. After reading some comments on the first haul video, I thought it was probably smart to grab the items I was thinking about, especially since I could get them at a discount. So I'm glad that I went because I was able to get everything that I was thinking about and purchased some things that had not been put out on the floor yet. So that was a bonus. And they're some of my favorite things in this haul. My total was $47.70. So I purchased 13 items. That means that each item worked out to be $3.69. And for some of the things I found, I think that was a great price. The items I purchased uh, were originally marked some $1, $2, $3, six dollars all the way up to twenty dollars so that's why i just decided to figure out the price per item three dollars we'll round it up to 70 we'll say three dollars and 70 cents so this is the first piece that i picked up when i walked in just because i'd been eyeing it up for a long time and it was the other glass serving dish with the sterling base so i've cleaned this with soap and water i didn't even polish the bottom because it wasn't uh too bad and I'm currently rearranging the objects in here, moving into spring. So there really is no rhyme or reason and the decorating and rearranging will be a project for a different day. So at the top, this piece here is the one that I purchased on Saturday. And then I wound up getting the larger one on Sunday. I had had my eye on these dog figurines for a while, so I decided that I was finally gonna get them. And this one is, looks like a collie to me. You could use a little Sharpie on the ear if you wanted to repair it, but I don't mind little bits of damage like that. Um, just shows it was loved. And I use these in my sculptures. Um, they're just a great size. And then a Schnauzer. And that one is on the Hagen Reniker card. Looks like originally 450. And I don't see any issues with that one. I did purchase the other two molds. I bought the medium sized one in this design the day before. And the only reason I didn't purchase this one is because I didn't know if it could hold a votive or not, but actually it holds it very well. And that one does not have any markings on the bottom. And I got the large pineapple design. My daughter thought it was a fish. I said, yeah, it kind of looks like a fish, but I think it's a pineapple. And this one has some of that stained crazing. A little chip here or there, but it's in really nice condition. Um, so I think that this would look really nice in a, um, in a kitchen that had a shelf up high or on top of cabinets if the cabinets didn't go to the ceiling and you could display it like that. I also think on the center of a table as a centerpiece and then you could hold um, your cloth napkins in there just as a way to use it for something, um, even if you had a picnic and then put some silverware. Something like that might be really nice to put some serving pieces out on um, a picnic table or even just your dining room table if you had guests. Just a way to not only display it, but actually use it. So right now, I think that I will leave my mold here with the candle on the dining room table. A little unexpected find was this Yves Saint Laurent belt. I was really drawn to the way it looked and the colors. It's got, um, you know, a tortoise shell look to it with the brass findings. And um, I was debating whether or not to get it. And then John said, well, you know, that would look beautiful with a summer dress. And I said, okay, add it to my pile. I could wear it whenever, but definitely looking forward to the summertime and just adding something fancy to a simple outfit. The items I'm about to show you are inspired from this page. I got this magazine about two years ago and I always was drawn to this image. I love trophies and I love that they were all grouped together and had candles in them. So I'm always on the lookout. Now I've already owned this trophy. This is not something that I picked up, but I pulled it out to share the idea with you. So I would love to put candles in them, but since I only have two trophies, I'm not willing just yet to put real candles in them. I know I could put a battery powered one, but 
I really want to do real candles. So in the meantime, I found some things that I think are similar. So these are nice and silver and have a tarnish on them. And I love that they are hand engraved. And the R, my children's names start with R. And this one says Miriam. And that was my neighbor who um, actually inspired me to get my corner cabinets. So I love that they're engraved with something that is personal. So this one is just a little cup, um, just silver plate and I put a beeswax candle in there and this little pitcher and I did the same. So as I find more trophies, I could add them to this grouping, but I don't have too many just yet. Sometimes you can find a double handled sugar bowl. I found maybe one or two of those in the past. So they're not that common um, and I do keep my eye out for them as well because I think they're a great substitute if you can't find trophies. The magazine that I found that image in is flea market style holidays and this was from Christmas 2018 and they um, had it on the stands until 2019 but it's 2018 and every single page in this magazine is pure inspiration and even though it's for the holidays there is Christmas things but also um, crafts and entertaining ideas. And I think that the entertaining ideas are things that you could keep your eye out for all year long. The last pieces are jewelry items and my daughter was with me. So she picked out this pin, porcelain with painted cattails. There's a, a lake, trees and mountains in the distance and a lily pad in the foreground. And it's got a gold edge. Um, I do believe it's older and that the original pin backing or whatever was on there was taken off and a newer pin was glued to it. So she asked for that for her birthday. And then I found what I think are Victorian items. So I did film this last night. Lighting was terrible. Um, it's sunny now, but still dark. So I don't know if the um, shine will show up, but they are so much cleaner and shimmery. So these last four pieces, I believe, are Victorian um, jewelry items. So first was this chain, and it was tarnished. So I polished it up, and I purchased it because of the clasp. And I have seen these clasps before, and I know that they are used for watch fobs. So this one says Hadley, and actually I think you can see it right there. I was able to look at it under a magnifying glass um, before I had even polished it. Once I polished it, then it was easy to see. And it does say 12 karat. Now someone had commented uh, before saying that 12 karat um, is usually gold filled. Now this one doesn't say gold filled, but I looked into um, what that meant. And 12 karat means that it's half the amount of 24 karat gold, which is like the purest gold that you could get. So that means that this is half gold and half some other metal, an alloy to make it stronger. And if you found something that said 12 karat gold filled, that meant that half of that is filled with an alloy. So you're getting about 1 40th of gold. Okay. So I Googled, can gold tarnish? And they said, yes, if gold is not 100% pure gold and it's mixed with other metals, if those other metals will tarnish, this will tarnish. Plus, I just think that they dull with age, dirt, dust, oils, that kind of thing. So I got my um, silver polishing cloth and I rubbed it on it and it became dark and this just shimmered up. And yes, my horrible winter fingers. So I'm so glad that I did that because I will tell you this thing was dark. It did not shimmer and now it looks like sparkly gold. Not a lot of gold, but a little bit of gold. And I think it's beautiful. And even that class, just how it's not a perfect circle. So then I also researched, what is a fob? I've heard that term forever. And I always felt like fob is like initials for something, like F-O-B. Well, I could never get an answer. It's just a fob. What's a watch fob? It's just a fob. So I found on a website, it said um, it was about the German language. And talking about, I guess maybe you could say different dialects or ways that people might speak German, different words, slang, things like that. And the word popped up, um, Fobke, F-O-B-K-E. And it said that it was, I don't know, a, a lesser known 
German dialect, and that it meant pocket. And I thought, okay, that has to be where Victorian time, po pocket watch fob, key fob comes from, from the beginning of that word. It's that little pocket that you have that you would put your watch in, and I guess they just decided to call the chain that connects to the things that you might put in that pocket a fob. So hopefully mystery solved. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, so then I found this one. Now this one is fancier. It is a double chain. It also was tarnished and it has polished up nicely. It's got the same type of clasp. Um, I could not read the markings because they're on the inside and I wasn't able to clean that up. And then it has this piece that slides. And this one doesn't have any markings either, um, but I did rub the back on the polishing cloth and that really cleaned it up. So this one I think you could wear as a necklace because you could just hook it on that double chain right there. And it's got some, I believe, fake pearls. I don't know if a pearl would have been in the middle or maybe like a diamond chip. Don't know. But I was very happy to find these. And um, I knew that these were older because of that clasp. I've seen that clasp before. So I'll just share with you something that I already had. This purse didn't have a handle, but I had had this chain from a different sale and it just worked out perfectly to attach it. So I then thought, oh, maybe this one will polish up. So you can even see there, it says Bates and then it has um, some other letters that I think have kind of polished away. So I didn't want to take this one completely off, but I did use my polishing cloth and it cleaned up, um, looks a lot better less tarnished than it was. So that was that was a nice surprise. I never knew that there could be a little bit of gold in that. And then my daughter spied this, and you can see how sparkly that one is now. So it is a heart charm with some engraving. And then the price tag was on the back. It was only $2 to begin with. Um, and it has this as well. And it, that motif is very uh, Victorian. So the last piece, which is my favorite, and this one just sparkles now. Um, I'm just drawn to rhinestones. I mean, who can resist them? And then I looked at this claw and the back with this like goldish brass piece. And I thought, well, that's not really something modern. And I can't even tell you how sharp these are. So I added that to my pile, but when it didn't shimmer and it was kind of dark and dingy, it was one of those pieces that I thought, well, maybe it isn't that old, but I did look it up on eBay and they call it a Victorian belt buckle. So I guess you'd put the fabric through and these would really just grab onto your ribbon or your fabric or your leather. Um, and they go for all different price ranges. I think you could find something very affordable. And then I think the one I found with rhinestones that looked similar was to, you know, they were asking $250. So I polished this on the back with my um, polishing cloth and I could see it was really shining up. So then that's when I decided to really go for it. Some areas are definitely hard to get to, but I just wish the lighting was better in here. This thing sparkles so much now. I feel like I brought its life back to these items. So that's what I have to share with you. I hope you enjoyed and I will see all of you in another video. Bye.